Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bharat and uh, Texplicit is back. We are back with another episode of a show that you guys have uh, really liked. This time around, we want to discuss uh, what the implications are for India in the near future. Considering what's happening around the world, India is being labeled as a possible future technology factory for the world. So moving supply chains to India and manufacturing in India, is that going to bring about prosperity? Is that going to bring about problems? Let's discuss that a little bit in this video. So let's quickly get started. Now, the world faces one of the biggest crises uh, that has been known to man. Uh, the pandemic at a scale is infecting people that has not been seen before and the amount of people that have been infected and the amount of deaths continues to rise at an alarming rate all over the world. Now, China is being largely blamed for the pandemic, but more importantly, this has started to raise questions about the whole world supply chain and China has been largely responsible for supplying products and goods to the rest of the world and including India, but now China is being questioned. Now, China is an evil country and it's taken a while for people to realize this. Uh, the kind of atrocities that they're doing to their own people and sending them to concentration camps just because they're not of a religion that they believe in or whether what is happening in Hong Kong or if you look at their illegal mining practices all over the world or their interventions and interference with the United Nations and the World Health Organization, among other things. Now, China has always had this propaganda, but what has allowed people to overlook this is because countries were never really affected by this directly, or so they thought, and hence China would fly under the radar and continue doing whatever they were. Now, Chinese apps were known to collect data for a very long time, and this has come into the news uh, time and again, years and years and years, and apps have constantly been targeted as uh, a data collection or the servers being in China, sending all the data to China. This has been in conversation for a while, but now that China has come back into focus and now that uh, the conflict happened at the border and Indian soldiers died, that Indian governments have started to take notice. And the notice wasn't really to sort of say that uh, data is being collected. It was sort of to push this Chinese army back and say that, you know, leave the border and don't trouble us. So this was more a diversion tactic to push back the army versus uh, violent retaliation that could have happened at the border. So a smart move from a political point of view, but it doesn't really solve the problem because still a lot of Chinese origin applications exist on uh, even Android. PUBG, for example, is primarily China based. So there's a lot that needs to be discussed when it comes to all of that, but that we leave for possibly another explicit. What we want to discuss is India's potential future as a technology powerhouse, as a super factory for the world, and how many companies and countries are discussing shifting their supply chains to India. There's a lot that needs to happen to India before all of that can happen. So let's take China's example. In the 1990s, when China started to open up their trade, the one thing that the country did, which really led to their rise, is the amount of infrastructure investment that was done by the Chinese government and by the Chinese people. So they started building factories, they started building roads, uh, they started building powerhouses and electricity supply and water supply. So as a manufacturer, if you went to the government and said, okay, this is what I want to manufacture, there was a lot of support from the government for land, for electricity, for water, and in general infrastructure. So they made special economic zones and factories and manufacturing facilities, and then also provided those at a very nominal rate to people who wanted to manufacture, hence allowing for the quick and rapid rise of China as a manufacturing superpower. This in turn allowed the Chinese government to sort of control most of the companies and then have this rule or this law that is being talked about, especially in Huawei's case, where the government can at any time ask any company that works in China to provide data to the government. And this is a law that they've had. And they can have this law because they provide so much infrastructure, so much help and support to manufacturers and to companies uh, that they now sort of partially own 
whatever company has sort of started manufacturing or exist in China. On the flip side, in India, if you look at manufacturing facilities and manufacturing regions, the biggest issue for India still remains infrastructure. We still lack roads even in commercial areas. We still lack proper electricity supply because we don't have uh, consistent electricity supplies even in commercial areas and some other major infrastructural challenges exist in India. So if India has to move forward towards a technology manufacturing facility or a superpower factory for the world, what India needs to do is start investing in infrastructure. There is a massive, massive differentiator between the kind of infrastructure that exists in a country like China and the kind of infrastructure that exists in India, and that needs to change really quickly. What also needs to change is the kind of investments that Indian companies are making. So for the longest time, smaller companies and smaller startups have looked at China as the supply chain, which has led to a economic rise in India. A lot of businesses in India now exist on the premise that they are manufacturing in China and they can do that because the manufacturing systems in China are so well built that prices can be much lower and hence products can be cheaper and hence you get a better value add service at the end. So if I'm buying a television from a non-Chinese brand, I spend a lakh of rupees, I can get a similar television from a Chinese brand for around 20, 30,000 rupees and that allows for a better value money add for a lot of people because now they can jump into a 55 inch television for example uh, versus earlier they could possibly only buy a 32 inch television. So if you start moving manufacturing facilities from China to a country like India where the infrastructure at this moment lacks uh, prices for commodities, prices for manufacturing, prices for services will definitely go up. So as Indians, we should be ready to pay those additional prices as well and support Indian brands who start to manufacture in India because it will take a long time for us to reach the manufacturing capacity that China is at. Now, there's a lot of conversation about manufacturing smartphones in India and Geo has come on board at the right moment talking about some of the services, some of the features, some of the apps and including some of the hardware that they are going to start launching and making in India. So if you look at the glasses, uh, the AR augmented reality glasses, uh, this is something that the entire world has already tried to do. So if you look at the HoloLens, if you look at the Oculus Rift, if you look at uh, even the HTC Vive, this is exactly the same kind of service and uh, Geo has started developing something like that. Now we don't know if it's going to come into fruition. We've seen a lot of promises from Geo in the past and they've always been under-delivered. If you look at the Geo phone as an example, or if you look at Geo smartphones when Geo was originally launched, you'll see that most of the supply chain for Geo also came from China. So they were manufacturing in China and selling in India as rebranded Geo devices. Now they might change that, but the fact in it lies that in India, we cannot 100% manufacture phones. And the premise of the Make in India tag is that more than 50 to 60% of the materials sourced for a product should be from India. So things like glass can be manufactured in India, things like bodies and chassis can be manufactured in India, PCB circuits can be manufactured in India, but chips, for example, cannot be manufactured in India. And the reason for that is that India doesn't have any kind of process fabs, and the only process fab we have is an ISRO one, which is a 200 nanometer process fab. And at the moment, uh, in the smartphone industry, we are running at somewhere around the seven nanometer mark. So what we are seeing is a tremendous amount of difference. And to set up a new process fab will require hundreds of billions of dollars. And that kind of investment India doesn't seem to have at the moment. If we manage to push manufacturing in India, we'll need not only investment, we'll need infrastructure, we'll need lots of uh, businessmen focusing their uh, actions towards manufacturing in India, because the mindset potentially is that the conversation will eventually die down. This whole India versus China mindset will eventually go away, and then people will go back to their business, and then China will continue manufacturing things because they are so good at it. Another reason that China succeeds as a manufacturing country is uh, the kind of uh, mindset that the Chinese worker has. Now, they've been a primarily communist country and the mindset of the people over there is very work oriented. In India, it's 
slightly more relaxed than it is in countries like China, which there is a hardcore military style work ethic, where in India it is more relaxed and the worker, most Indians, including myself, would rather not work and get paid. Whereas in China, people really want to work and people really want to get paid. So there is a little bit of a mindset difference. We as Indians need to change the mindset that we have and we need to put in better effort and better uh, work hours and better work ethics into our country and into our factories and into our offices and businesses to get a better work ethic and to get a better output and to get better productivity from the entire country. If you look at some of the companies that have considered manufacturing in India, the biggest challenge they face is a lazy or a slow workforce. And that can change only if we as Indians change our mindset and become more work oriented and become slightly more productive than we currently are, which will encourage other companies to come invest in India and start manufacturing in India. Another big hurdle that is going to restrict India from becoming a manufacturing superpower for the world is going to be the massive amounts of corruption at every level in the country. And this really needs to change if India needs to become a bigger, better manufacturing country from buying land to getting licenses, to getting tax numbers, to getting GST numbers, to getting the right kind of uh, all your paperwork done. That takes a lot of time for a lot of companies and they're not really interested in working in a country where they're constantly needing to bribe uh, all sorts of people to get their work done. So if a company like Apple sets up a plant in India, they'll need to jump through all of these hoops and red tape and get blocked off by several laws that are really old and need to change and will also get blocked off by lots of processes that are in place. And in that much time, they'll already set up a factory and start manufacturing something new in a country like China or in a country like Mexico. So India needs to change all of that. India needs to change uh, and move away from corruption. And that can only happen when, again, as Indians, we change our mindset and we stop accepting the kind of people that we have leading all of these things and uh, start picking our leaders in local areas, in major areas properly. It doesn't matter what government rules the country. What matters is that corruption needs to go. What matters is that processes need to become simpler. And what matters is that manufacturing needs to become better. Infrastructure needs to become better. And most importantly, the mindset of the Indian needs to become better. We need lots of investment in manufacturing facilities like uh, process fabs in India. And India can do it. We need a better workforce, a well-trained workforce. So people need to start changing their objectives and start educating themselves towards uh, a different line, a different kind of engineering. Uh, batteries can be manufactured in India. Chips can be manufactured in India. Displays can be manufactured in India, but it'll require a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. And all of that is available in India, but it's not being routed to the right places. And that needs to change majorly. Now, while India is possibly a future manufacturing facility for technology for the world, there still lies a massive problem and this whole boycott China needs to kind of stop because what we really need is all of these Chinese electronics. What we really need is all of uh, the smartphones, all of the electronics, laptops and all the technology China has already researched to help us now develop our own systems. We can use this technology and continue to excel our economy, but now start investing in the right places. So by boycotting China today, what we are effectively doing is reducing our chances for becoming a manufacturing facility. So what we really need to do is smartly use their technology and start making our own technology and then eliminate their technology in all entirety. So use a tactic in which we get all the information, all the knowledge, all the technology from them because they've already researched and they've already set up shop. So we can study their model, we can study their uh, systems, we can study their processes, start manufacturing in our own country and then maybe five years, 10 years down the line, India can become independent and also become a major supply chain for the world and sort of reduce our global dependence on China as a manufacturing facility. A fun fact for a lot of people that don't know is that 60% of all lithium-ion batteries are manufactured in China and raw materials are mostly mined by Chinese companies, uh, including cobalt, which is a major uh, component for lithium-ion batteries, especially those used in electric cars, including Teslas and Porsches and any other electric car that you may like. 
So that also is a dependence that uh, the global uh, leadership has on China, and that also needs to change, and that can only happen with the right kind of investments, the right kind of people leading the charge, and the right kind of mindset for the entire Indian nation as a whole. We hope this video helps you understand what the future for India holds. And while the future may be positive, a lot of new things need to happen. And if you guys agree, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Iagan and the bell notification icon to get notified each time we upload a video. This has been Bharat. I'll see you guys in the next one. So by boycotting, boycott. So by boycott, ठीक है ना थोड़ा सा सो बाय बाय कॉटिंग बाय कॉटिंग सो बाय बाय कॉट